and the driver of all that is being able to create that customer experience. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's not about products, as you say, it's more about solutions, and that customer experience is almost forcing uh, businesses mm -hmm. to collaborate in ways that they have never before, and being able to look at the their capabilities and being able to say, am I able to provide this, yeah. or who else do yeah. I need to be able to bring together? Absolutely. Yes. I mean, uh, let me try to put it in, yes. in a bit of a historical perspective. Please. I think that for a very long time, we had a world that was based on uh, production based on exclusion. What yes. do I mean? You had people who had mm. almost the birthright to work in an industry. Well, yes. you had them in uh, terms of the guilds, you yes. know, the, the professional associations that said, this is my area of competence, right. and we're gonna have a bit of a deal. If I get this accreditation, nobody else can compete. Right. Lawyers and doctors and uh, tradesmen of all sorts, from making books to shoes to whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And societies were organized by saying, tell you what, in order to make sure that nobody g gets uh, sort of uh, in, a, in a difficult position, we will allow these guilds right. to self-regulate, but on the other hand, it says that if you're outside, we're not going yes, to accept Yes, it maintained you. a balance of sorts that, exactly. uh, yes. Yeah, like, well, you yes, know, and life right. can continue, uh, and we have yes. each our roles, and right. we know what our roles are. Yes. Um, and then we had the same thing with firms that yes. had their charters, and right. we knew where we would find them. But I think that we started saying, well, hang on a minute, if we do all of that good stuff, there are going to be some people who take advantage of that. And you see an increasing reduction in the tolerance that society yes. has for those who have these exclusive provinces. And here's what happened if you think about the mirror image of this in terms of competition. Mm -hmm. If you were abusing your customers less than your competitors, you're doing just great because your customers didn't have much choice. Right, so exactly. banks, for, 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 for instance, for a very long time, they're just dreadful in terms of uh, the way that they treated the customer. And if you want to think, for instance, about why is fintech making such inroads, I think that the answer has to be found in um, the customer satisfaction yes. surveys that show that there is a massive difference in mm -hmm. terms of the value that people perceive, not because they hate banks, but because banks don't are not attuned to look at their needs. And, you know, <laughs> think that the word UX, user experience, yes. comes from the technology sector. Yes. It doesn't come yes. from the banking sector. Right. And then people in banking said, oh, blimey, I can't uh, mistreat the customers. And it's not that if I'm better than another bank at mistreating right. them, I'm going to make a living. So I think that what you see now that with the changes in the uh, structure of competition yes. and the possibility of uh, organizations that come from, from different areas, bringing right. new capabilities, bringing new ideas on how to right. approach customers, customers have much more choice. And when they yes. have more choice, they walk. And when they walk, they can move out much more quickly, which means that organizations must be more agile, more right. collaborative, and all of the fun stuff that you guys are working right. on in terms of transformation and in terms of making the transformation real start becoming urgent needs. Yes. Because if organizations that are established and are not really used to be thinking about themselves critically yes. and to change and to adapt, don't adapt, well, guess what? We're going to have um, the old style Darwinian selection where they become smaller and then the new players that are more agile become right. bigger. And I think that to me, that's an interesting takeaway from what we see with these firms that are coming from either technology or non-conventional right. areas. I don't think that it's so much their tech as it is their flexibility and their yes. ability of recasting what their value proposition is, what the position in their ecosystem is. And you see these firms that are pivoting three, mm -hmm. four, five times before they say, oh, that's what works. Right, right. You know, the barriers are falling. Mm -hmm. Technology has enabled those barriers to fall mm -hmm. and others to be able to rise unconventional, as mm -hmm. you say. And you know, they have... Uh, garnered a better perspective of, as you say, the customer needs. Mm -hmm. And they're flourishing because of the fact that they are able to satisfy those needs in a better way. Absolutely. And I think that to go back to the theme that I know is is uh, central to the mission right now uh, that, that you're trying to, uh, to engage in, I think that that also opens up a transformation agenda within organizations. Absolutely. Because essentially it says, look guys, um, if we continue doing what we were doing, we're simply going to start shrinking and uh, what we will do is we're going to go after looking at the symptom not at the cause we're going to think that we have 
our costs are too high because we don't make margins, because we don't make people happy. And we will start becoming smaller and smaller in our effort to streamline and shrink as opposed to see what can we do in order to add value. And to add value, you do need to adjust and adapt your DNA to ensure that you can be more responsive to the changes in the environment around you.